For more than a year, our frontline health care workers have battled the pandemic, saving lives while trying to stay physically and mentally healthy. And now the lessons they've learned may help all of us overcome a very challenging year. We break it down for you tonight in this Mental Health Monday. South Carolina confirmed its first case of COVID-19 March 6th, 2020. Within a month, it was in all 46 counties. Each afternoon, we saw new numbers and hospitals saw new patients, each one of them a physical and emotional test for people like St. Francis intensive care doctor and pulmonologist Julia Payne. Right at the beginning, we could feel the uptick in urgency uh, or, or illness of our patients and we wondered, how is this affecting us? Payne and her colleagues were always on the front lines, and this pandemic with so much daily suffering and death has clearly taken a toll. There are definitely times in the last year when we've either lost a colleague or fought extremely hard for someone and not had the outcome that we wanted, that it has been a silent place. And those days have been our most difficult. Payne noticed she had trouble sleeping, other staff battled anxiety, depression, and stress. The pandemic itself, a form of trauma, and the way upstate hospitals dealt with that emotional cost may give us a roadmap for everyone's post-pandemic recovery. If there is anything to be thankful for in a time of COVID, is that it feels like that's a safe thing to talk about, that COVID has impacted our well-being, and that it's okay to talk about that. And so a lot of times that is a great place to start. How has COVID impacted your life? Healthcare workers, like so many of us, can fall victim to comparative suffering, that is, dismissing all the ways the pandemic's affected us, because so many others have had it worse. By simply asking, how has the pandemic affected you? Therapists like Prisma's Stephanie John found a way to get people talking about trauma. Having a unified experience of the world going through a pandemic can give us a sense of community where it's safe to say, this impacted me. Now, how it impacted you may be different than your neighbor, than your coworker, but having permission to say COVID has impacted me. John says Prisma's employee helplines now available 24 seven in multiple languages. They've launched an app and have self guided resources for employees more reluctant to share. The number of first time users is growing. At St. Francis, they've had similar resources, often led by chaplains leading the listening on every floor. When we looked for meaning, which I think is in the human condition to look for meaning, we fell back on what was important to us, and, and that most certainly is our faith. St. Francis had weekly debriefs with certified counselors, and without visitors, the waiting areas became quiet rooms filled with quiet music and reflection. But most important is the growing awareness. Dr. Payne started exercising more, which reduced stress and made it easier to sleep. And she, like thousands of her colleagues, will still need more time to heal. Having seen the amount of suffering and sadness that we've had in the last year, I think we'll all carry with us a lot, a lot of heartbreak and that that will take time, take time to heal and that there are stories that will be with us for the rest of our lives. So let's look at how the doctors have handled that stress. First, they're not playing the comparison game. Instead, asking how has the pandemic affected you? and taking those answers seriously. They found resources for therapists, faith leaders, and others who are trained to listen. And most of all, they've learned to ask for help. If you need help, we've got resources posted now at WSPA.com.